Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Now I didn't think I'd be able to get this video and squeeze it in, but I am going to be able to do it and release it on time, so that is good news. Today's video is going to be about comparing two battery packs, and thanks to you guys who make recommendations for which video and batteries to cover, I do see these. Not all of them I get a chance to look at, and many of them I don't get a chance to reply to, but I do appreciate all of your recommendations and that's where we got the last video topic and today's video topic where we're going to compare two battery packs one being the best battery versus the worst battery but instead of doing what we did last video we're now comparing of equal dollar value the way that i'm going to do this is take the worst battery pack in terms of performance and when we talk about performance we're ultimately talking about the amount of voltage drop versus the amount of current that we're able to pull from that battery pack with respect to heat that the battery builds. Heat is never a good thing with battery packs. This is why we're selecting this as our number one for poorest battery. We're going to compare that of equal value, find out what the cost is of that battery pack, then go into the database batteries that we've tested and pull one that is of the best performance and we're going to see exactly how they compare. I've not done this yet on the channel so this is a first. I can't wait to get into to it and take a look at the results. I'm going to put together a graph that represents exactly what we saw last day and see where we're at. With that being said, let's jump into those graphs. We'll get to the performance metrics here in a few seconds. I do want to cover the price point as this is important for this specific video. The Z battery pack, this comes right off of the brand's own website. If you look there, this is going to come in at $103 USD for the set. This makes it $51.50 per piece for the Z battery. If you order off of Amazon.com, the price point you'd pay here is $89. That's about $44.55 per piece. And looking at the CNHL, this comes in at $89.99, $45 per piece. And if you go on their brand website, it's at $38 USD. I'd imagine this price is, you know, just a special time offer. Otherwise, you're paying about $45 per piece for both of these battery packs. And now let's jump into the performance metrics and see what kind of power we get at different points in time. So this is the chart that we have here today. This is the graph that we have here today. And we're going to compare the wattage of the CNHL battery pack versus that Z pack. And we got along the bottom side, you can see here at different points. So this is wattage at the maximum current value. This typically comes within the first few seconds of pulling the trigger. And then you got the wattage at the 10 second mark. If you're making a high speed pass somewhere between the 10 second mark and the next value that we have at the 30 second mark, this is where you'd see the performance there for that first high speed pass. And then the wattage at the cutoff, we're taking a look once we hit 3.3 volts per cell, what is that amount of power that we're getting at? And then we're taking a look on the next slide, what the difference is in terms of the actual milliamp hour usable capacity that we're able to pull out from both of these battery packs. So let's take a look at now the wattage here. On the CNHL battery pack, at max current, we're getting 1,747 watts versus the Z battery pack at 1,354. Quite a substantial difference there you can see between those two bars. And then we look at the 10 second mark, we get 1,620 for the CNHL and the Z battery pack comes in at 1,217 watts. So even there, quite a big difference in power output that you're getting from one battery pack versus the other at that point in time. One point to keep in mind for this graph here is that we do load these battery packs at about 105 amps nominally. A better battery will perform better than that 105 amp mark and a poorer or weaker battery will perform lower than that 105 amp mark. And it really depends on the voltage output that the battery can maintain as we are loading it. We load it constant load, not constant power or constant current. So let's take a look now at 30 seconds. The CNHL is at 1543 watts where the Z battery packs at 1210 watts. And the last element that we have here is the wattage that we get at that cutoff point. This is where it's the closest and you're getting a cutoff of 1247 watts right at that point and 11 
760 watts for the Z. Now keep in mind, we have another element to tack onto this that we're gonna talk in this next graph. Let's take a look at the chart and details here of our information. So all of this information that we just went through comes specifically from this chart here on the left-hand side. So when we take a look at the currents that we're getting at max current, so the max current of the CNHL pack that we have here is 116.1 amps, where the max current that we got out of the Z battery pack is 96.6 amps. And the reason for those differences is the voltage maintained by the CNHL was 15.1, where the voltage maintained for the Z was 14.01. So all Already right within those few seconds, the Z battery pack has a massive voltage drop. And this works out to a 17% drop in current, 7% drop in voltage, working out to a 23% overall drop in power output by the CNHL to the Z battery pack. At the 10 second mark, you're getting 110 amps versus 90.7 amps. And the voltage there is at 14.8 versus 13.41. So 17% drop at the current side of things and a 9% drop at the voltage side of things gives you an overall maximum drop that we see here. It comes in at 25%. Now if we look at the 30 second mark, the CNHL is at 108 amps versus the Z battery pack at 89.2 amps. This is a 17% drop yet again and we have a 14.3 volt versus 13.56 volts for the Z battery pack. Now we take a look at the cutoff. So this works out to 13.1 versus 13.11 volts. And the cutoff current was 95.1 amps versus 88.5 amps for the Z battery pack. That's a drop of 7% and the voltage was actually right around the same mark there. So 0% on voltage, but overall gives you that 7% drop in wattage. However, the big difference that we are saying in the difference between these two bars in the graph is that the milliamp hour, the total capacity that you're pulling from that CNHL while it's maintaining a minimum of 95 amps, it's gonna be 4,690. 93 milliamp hour and at 88.5 amps for the Z battery pack it gets cut off because we hit that 3.3 volt mark at 872 milliamp hour of capacity. That's an 81% drop in actual usable capacity at this significant load. Next question that we pull from here is if we don't actually have this cutoff, where does the problem lie? Well, the CNHL battery pack can deliver this 105 amps for the entire duration of the battery pack and maintain a healthy temperature that is completely safe. However, the Z battery pack cannot do that. So if we took that 3.3 volt per cell point and we got rid of it and we just ran it based off of temperature, it's gonna get cut off at different points. And we can see that here in this small chart that we have in the top center of this slide. The Z battery pack is gonna hit its maximum thermal temperature here under an 80 amp load. This is now reducing the load and these are constant current values. I maintain 80 amps for the entire duration of the battery until it hits that excessive temperature. And then we pull out 28.6 so if you maintain 80 amps, the usable capacity we get out of the battery pack is 2860 milliamp hour. If you have a load of 70 amps constant, where we maintain 70 amps for the entire duration of the capacity of the battery here, it'll hit its maximum temperature threshold at 3700 milliamp hour. So it's getting better, but it's still nowhere close to where the CNHL was because we didn't have these temperature limitations at this load value. At 65 amps, we're getting 4037. It still hits its maximum temperature threshold. And then at 60 amp load, we're getting 4279 milliamp hour. And right there is where it hits its maximum temperature threshold. This works out to somewhere around a 12 C actual rating for the Z battery pack. The Z battery pack was listed here as a 120 C battery pack. The CNHL is listed as a 90 C. We know that these C values, you can pretty well throw them in the garbage. What we actually care about is what does it actually work out to, not on a label mounted or stuck onto the battery. And both of these battery packs are very similar in the label information, but perform entirely different for the same cost. 
this is what it works out to for the Z battery pack. Maintaining 60 amps is possible, but you're still only getting out 4,300 milliamp hour. Now, these battery packs are both rated for 5,200 milliamp hour. If you put it under a five amp load, yeah, you probably can get the full 5,000 plus milliamp hour out of both of these battery packs, but that's not practical for what we use these battery packs for. We place them under load and this is ultimately what shows us we can get out of the battery pack based on these constant current values. There's the data. Now let's pull a conclusion from what we saw in those charts and graphs. When it comes down to power and performance of a battery, this is ultimately what we test for. It's the sole item that we look for. There is one clear winner and that is the CNHL battery pack. It heavily outperforms the Z battery pack. And then when we look at our additional parameter that we've considered here today, that is looking at an equal price point. If you have to pay the same amount of money for both these battery packs and the only consideration that you have is price and performance, which one are you gonna go with? The answer here is clear, it's going to be the CNHL battery pack. And the last point here for today, I know there's a couple of you who have been asking for me to take these battery packs, drop them into a radio controlled vehicle, and then show performance metrics of that vehicle. I'm trying to figure this one out. This one is probably the biggest challenge for me because I really appreciate taking all of the information that I provide to you, making certain that this is a fair and equal test as best as I possibly can. When it comes to our battery performance data that I show you, I control a lot of the factors to make this test essentially the same for every single battery pack that we throw on that equipment. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.